Hi everyone, this is Anandita Paulus and today's video is about understanding our body's energy system. You might have heard about people talking about having an imbalance in the body's energy system or an imbalance in the chakra system or just people talking about, especially in the spiritual circles, people talk about the pranic body or the energy body and the chakras and imbalances or disturbances or blockages in chakras. So what does that mean? And that is what we are going to discuss in today's video. The word chakra is actually a Sanskrit word. The root word is chakra, which means a wheel. So the chakras really refer to wheels of energy which are located in our body. You could even think about them as energy centers or energy vortices. It's like a vortex of energy which is there located in our body. And in fact, there are hundreds of energy centers located in our body. And there are also energy centers located outside of our body which also impacts us. But in today's video, we will be talking about the energy centers which are located in our body, which are the seven primary chakras located in our body. So the chakras, like I said, they are like this spinning wheel of energy. And there are certain centers in our body where this energy has accumulated or gathered or manifested more strongly than in other centers. And as a result, these energy centers powerfully affect or impact our mental, emotional and physical bodies and the organs which are governed by those specific chakras. So the chakras are not something that you can see with your plain eyes, but people can see them with their third eye or their intuitive eye. Or with their clairvoyance. If you are highly sensitive to energy then it might be something that you might be able to see with your eyes. People who are very sensitive to energy or people who can read auras or see auras around people they might be able to detect certain chakras as well as uh, detect imbalances in the chakras or even see the colors of different chakras. So the chakras store energy, thoughts, feelings, memories, experiences and actions and they influence and direct our present and future mindset, behavior, emotional health, as well as actions. The life force energy or the prana in each of these chakras can always be transformed and transmuted so that we can consciously manifest what we want to experience in this life rather than keep on repeating our old patterns. So chakra healing is the intentional practice of connecting with our chakras or the stored energy so that we can understand how our past is influencing our present and how we can transmute those energies so that our future is not impacted by our past. Each of the chakra centers in our body correspond to massive bundles of nerves in our body. And not only that, they also govern certain organs which are located in that part of the body. Plus, they also impact certain emotions as well as certain mental tendencies and behaviors. As a result, when certain chakras are out of balance, then certain specific mental tendencies, mental and emotional tendencies and behavioral tendencies tend to emerge in that person. So the seven primary chakras which people generally talk about because these are the seven primary energy centers which impacts our physical body. They are the Muladhara or the root chakra, which is also known as the very first chakra, which is located at the base of the perineum. The second is the sacral chakra, which is also called the Swadhisthana. The third is the solar plexus, which is located right above the navel. It is also known as Manipura or Manipuraka. The fourth chakra is the heart chakra, also known as Anahata. The fifth chakra is the Vishuddhi, which is also known as the throat chakra. The sixth chakra is the third eye chakra, also called Ajna. And the seventh chakra is the crown chakra, also known as Sahasrara. So, this was just a very brief overview of the seven chakras located inside the human body. Of course, there are certain chakras which are located outside the body, as well as there are many more minor chakras which are located all over the human body. But primarily from the perspective of healing and well-being, 
if these seven chakras, the seven primary chakras, which are aligned from the base of the spine to the top of the crown, if these seven chakras are aligned and balanced, then the whole body comes to a new level of vibrancy and balance and well-being. You can think about chakra healing as cleaning up a drain. Imagine the drain in your bathtub or the drain in your kitchen sink or maybe even a water hose if it has not been used in a long time and there's a lot of mud or dirt that has gathered up inside the pipe or the hose or let's say after you shower and if you have long hair like mine if you shampoo there's a lot of hair at the drain and if that hair is not removed then that clogs the drain and over a period of time with the clogged drain there will be mold and bacteria accumulating there which is not good for our health as well if you're living in that house and if you are using that bathroom so similarly with the human body if there are clogged chakras or blocked chakras or even imbalanced chakras which might not be blocked but overactivated hyperactivated chakras that could also lead to different kinds of imbalances in the mind body and emotions in order to heal your chakras you have to first learn how to connect with your chakras and there are various tools which can be used for connecting with the chakras there are various yogasanas which are yoga postures which can help you heal certain chakras there are also energy tools like reiki pranic healing meditation eft acupuncture acupressure all these things can help you in connecting with your chakras as well as energizing your chakras if they are weak or balancing them if they are overactive. Some people who are very sensitive to energies can also connect with the chakras just by using their hands, hovering the hands on the person's body or on their bodies. If you're really sensitive to energies, then you might be able to feel how a particular chakra is in a person's body. Some people who are also extremely sensitive to energies and are able to visually see energies, they might be able to see energies just with their eyes. But another way to visually see the chakras could be getting a Kirlian photography done. The Kirlian camera is used for getting Kirlian photographs and what they do is they make a picture of your aura, of your energy body. And that could be a good way of seeing how your chakras are functioning. If they are located at the proper spots, if they are properly balanced, if the color is the right vibrancy and so on. Awareness to which of your chakras are out of balance is key to aligning them. And our bodies are in a constant state of flux between balance and imbalance. In fact, depending on what you eat from day to day, your body's energy is constantly, it is dynamic, it is constantly changing from day to day. Even during the day, your energy might be a certain way during the daytime, it might be a certain way during the night. So depending on your lifestyle, depending on uh, the kind of food that you eat, the kind of people you interact with, or the work that you do. There are so many different factors that governs and affects your energy system. And depending on that, your chakras would be behaving differently on different days. Or in other words, your energies would be fluctuating or behaving differently on different days. But when you develop that inner awareness of being in touch or connecting with your chakras, then you will know intuitively what to do in order to balance out that energy. And of course, there are many energy healing modalities as well, such as Reiki and meditation and so on, which can always be used to balance out the chakras and any of the energy imbalances in the body. When healing the chakras, it is always suggested to start with the root chakra and explore ideas related to safety, nourishment, belonging, finances and family, since these are the primary areas which the root chakra governs and from there you can move up to the higher chakra the sacral chakra the solar plexus and so on and the reason why it is suggested that you first begin with the root chakra is because the root chakra is the foundation of your physical existence on planet earth so imagine that you are constructing a building the foundation of the building is the very first and foremost thing that needs to be taken care of to make sure that the building lasts for a really long time. And so the foundational chakra, the root chakra, 
needs to be worked upon the very first when you start working with your chakras. Because as long as you are in this physical human body, living a physical life on planet Earth, you need to make sure that your foundation is strong. The health of the lower chakras is crucial for the health of the upper chakras. Because without a sense of grounding, stability and safety, it may be very jarring to open up the third eye or crown chakra that are related to your intuition or divine connection and higher knowing. In order to open up your higher chakras, it is really important that you are solidly grounded in your physicality. So the chakra system offers a map that helps us see the correlation between our anatomy, mindset, emotions, and our behaviors. And it also puts us in the driver's seat. It gives us or it empowers us to do something about our life. The chakra anatomy reminds us of our infinite potential that we can be grounded and at the same time be connected to the divine. We can be passionate and yet very disciplined and we can be expressive and compassionate at the same time. So that was just a brief overview of the chakra system. And in my upcoming videos, I will be diving deeper into each of the seven primary chakras located in the human body. So if you like this video and if you would love to learn more about each of the seven chakras and how it impacts you, and how to heal and balance each of the chakras, then subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for my upcoming videos.